Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to another reading with Raptors. We'll wait a minute for everyone to kind of get in and join us. Uh, right now I'm inside here. Uh, it's a little bit dreary out for those of us here in Minnesota and the rest of the upper Midwest. It's a little rainy out today. Um, so we are inside this time. We are actually in the main back work area that we usually are working in here at the Raptor Center. Um, so you might see behind me, there's our main computer. These are actually the back side. If you've been to our program room um, for here on site, a program, this is actually the back side of the cabinets or the pass-throughs that we have. Um, so they're actually kind of crates in between. So we're back here in the, what we call the Eagle Room or our main workstation. Um, I have with me today, I have one of our American Kestrels. We call her Darner. Um, she is gonna just hang out here. We have a couple of things set up for her. Um, this is kind of a, a small, what we call a tether spot. Um, we have a water pan here kind of in the front and uh, she was just drinking some water from it. So hopefully she'll be interested in doing something. Um, and then I also have behind, it's pretty small, which some of you might appreciate, I do have a whole mouse for her to eat if she is interested. So she's got some breakfast, she's got her bathtub, we should be good to go. So today what we're going to be talking about is eggs. Uh, it's springtime, a lot of birds are coming back to the state, a lot of birds already here have nests already. In fact, uh, here at the Raptor Center we've already seen some young raptors who've already hatched um, and already maybe in need of assistance from people. Um, so everyone's thinking about eggs and nests, so I figured today would be a great day to read an excellent book about eggs of all kinds, and then I actually went through our current kind of archives to find some examples of eggs. Um, some of them are real, some of them are very realistic models of eggs, but we're gonna take a look at all of the different eggs that birds can lay, especially for raptors. So we will be reading um, a book called An Egg is Quiet. It's by Diana Aston and Sylvia Long. Um, I'll do a lot of close-ups with this because it has some absolutely beautiful artwork, as you can probably tell right there at the beginning. It's got this very fun holographic title. So I thought it would be a really good one to read today. So this is An Egg is Quiet. And right away on the inside is some art that looks like an egg. As well as a lot of different eggs. Whoops, sorry. As a lot of different eggs. Sorry, I'm still playing with the mirroring, I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll try to do some close-up pictures of these later, but here's a bunch of different eggs. Some are from bugs. Some are from, ooh, this is one of my favorite eggs. This is actually from a dogfish or kind of shark. There's an emperor penguin egg. There is a Atlantic salmon egg over here. Lots of very good eggs. I love the artwork in this book. Try to get some better close-up ones for you later. So this is, an egg is quiet. An egg is quiet. And here it says, this is what an egg of a black-necked stilt looks like, which is a kind of shorebird with very long legs. It's a whitish kind of tan egg with black and brown speckles. There we go. It sits there under its mother's feathers, on top of its father's feet, buried beneath the sand, warm, cozy. And here we have, there we go, an Anna's hummingbird sitting on a nest. Here we have an emperor penguin keeping that egg nice and warm on top of its feet. And here we have Kemp's Ridley sea turtle laying her eggs in the sand. An egg is colorful. Look at all of these beautiful eggs. I'll point out a few of my favorites. Here is a black-capped mocking thrush. See how red that egg is? 
And below this brown turkey egg, here is an egg from an insect, the passion vine butterfly. And in the picture, they had to make it bigger because it's actually so tiny in real life. Here are some green eggs from a bird called an elegant tinamou, which is kind of like a very, very, very small ostrich that lives in South America. So many colorful eggs. An egg is shapely. There are round eggs, like this one from the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Sea turtles dig a hole in the sand with their flippers and lay up to 200 soft round eggs. Round eggs fit together nicely in tight spaces. There are oval eggs, like this ladybird beetle. This one is also larger than actual size. When ladybugs hatch as larvae, their first meal is often the egg case they crawled out of. Sorry. There are pointy eggs, like this one from the common myrrh. Seabird eggs are pointy at one end, so if they're laid on rock ledges, they roll around in safe little circles and not off the cliff. There are even tubular eggs, like this one from the dogfish. While most sharks give birth to live young, some sharks, like the lesser spotted dogfish, begin life in a leathery egg case with tendrils. The tendrils anchor the eggs to seaweed so they won't be swept away by the ocean current. Wow. So many different kinds of eggs. This one's a scavenger hunt. The markings on some eggs help them blend in with their surroundings. This is called camouflage. Camouflage is an egg's way of hiding because an egg is clever. An egg might be speckled to resemble the rocks around it, or it might be gray, the color of mud by a lake. An egg does not want to be eaten by a raccoon or a snake or a fox or an insect. So this picture has an egg from a sooty tern. Can you spot an egg in this picture with all the rocks and seaweed and shells? Can you spot the egg? It's right over here. See how well it blends in with all of the rocks? That is a sooty tern egg, which is another kind of seabird. It has nice speckled eggs to hide with all the rocks. Eggs come in different sizes. An ostrich egg can weigh as much as eight pounds. It is so big and so round, it takes two hands to hold one egg. Hummingbird eggs are the size of a jelly bean. It takes about 2,000 hummingbird eggs to equal the size of one ostrich egg. This is, uh, it says here, this is the egg from an ostrich. This one is from Anna's hummingbird, kind of hummingbird that lives further to the western coast. An egg is artistic. Look at all of the different designs on these eggs. Here, I'll try to frame it so that she's still in the picture. She's doing some wonderful stretching in the background. So up here we have something called a paradise crow with all these little lines on it, along with a bird called a yellow hammer. Here's a red-winged blackbird, those black birds with the bright red wings that you can see, especially if you're on the road or near a swamp, somewhere like that. This beautiful blue speckly egg is from a scarlet tanager 
really bright red bird that we see here in Minnesota only certain times of the year. These bright red eggs are from an Atlantic salmon. So even animals other than birds have these artistic eggs. This is a bronze winged jacana egg. And over here, some familiar bugs to us, like the Katie did, has these very decorative little eggs on the sides of leaves, as well as the harlequin bugs, little eggs clustered together on this leaf. We also have that sooty tern egg with all the beautiful speckles, the evening grosbeak, which we've just seen them move up north after our winter here. The Paradise Rifle Bird has these beautiful stripes. And the Arctic Tern, another seabird, has all these wonderful splotches on it. They look like a watercolor painting. Eggs are very artistic. You can see in the background our American Kestrel here doing some very good preening. An egg is textured. There are hard eggs. Bird eggs are hard. Here's an example of a boat-tailed grackle egg, a kind of uh, very common uh, black shiny bird that you might see, especially in the southern US. There are soft eggs, like this green iguana egg. Reptile eggs are often soft and rubbery. There are gooey eggs, like the leopard frog. Amphibian eggs are gooey. The goo keeps them from drying out. There are smooth eggs, like this black vulture egg. Most bird eggs are smooth. And there are rough eggs, like this southern cassowary egg. The eggs of cassowaries, emus, and cormorants are rough. We're actually going to see an example of one of these rough eggs in a little bit. An egg might even be fossilized. The remains of creatures that died millions of years ago may become rock hard or fossilized. Scientists have unearthed fossilized dinosaur eggs all around the world. Some are round, some are oblong or oval shaped. Some are as small as one inch across and some are as large as 20 inches. Scientists believe all dinosaurs hatched from eggs. Look at these big fossilized eggs to become rocks. Such a good opportunity to learn. An egg is giving. I'll read the text first and then I'll talk about these wonderful diagrams. An egg gives the little creatures growing inside it everything it needs. The shell is its home. The yolk is its food. The egg white, or albumen, is its pillow. The shell is covered with teeny tiny holes which allow air to enter. So here is a diagram of an egg. There we go. So you can see the shell on the outside, this nice white kind of line. Pretty familiar probably with egg shells. But on the inside of the egg, if there's a baby animal growing in there, like a baby chicken, there's a little embryo. So that's the tiny little animal that's gonna grow up and fill up this whole egg. So that's the embryo. It's hanging out inside of the yolk, which has all the nutrients, all the food that it needs. It's surrounded by the albumin, which is the kind of clear and white stuff that you get if you crack open a chicken egg the albumin. There's an air sac in there to help kind of protect it. And then there's also this protein cord to keep it from sloshing around too much. So it keeps everything in place. So that's what an egg looks like on the inside when there's a tiny little bird growing in there. This is what it might look like for a chicken. It starts off about three days after the egg is laid. There's this tiny, tiny little embryo in it. About seven days, it's getting bigger. At about 13 days, it kind of starts to look like an actual chicken. At 18 days, it has feathers. Its eye is really big. You can see its feet. And then around 21 days, it hatches, all covered in feathers, 
ready to run around looking for seeds and insects to eat. Here's an example of a salmon egg. A salmon egg takes a while to grow because they start off so tiny, but around two weeks, you can see this tiny little fish inside. At about five weeks, it starts to look more and more like a fish. At eight weeks, it's outside of the egg but still has the yolk to feed it. At 11 weeks, it mostly looks like a fish and just has a tiny bit of yolk hanging out. And then after that, there it is, a salmon swimming around back out in the ocean. Now, this one's very interesting. This is a grasshopper embryo. It might rest inside the egg until the weather is just right for it to hatch. So at about two days, is this tiny, tiny little larva hanging out inside the egg. Five and seven days, it keeps growing. And then it might sit ready and waiting after 15 days. It might wait until the weather is just right to let it hatch into a grasshopper. An egg is quiet. Then suddenly, do you see something happening to this egg? Sitting down by the feet of this black necked stilt and those long legs. Do you see the little crack underneath or on the shell? Suddenly, an egg is noisy. Cheep, 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 cheep. This is what the tiny stilts look like when they hatch. You can also see the crunching of these green vegetable bugs eating their eggshells. And the same thing with this passion vine caterpillar eating its own egg case too. So you have these very noisy nestlings that just hatched out of their eggs. And then the end of this book actually shows all of the animals that hatched out of the eggs from the beginning. So we have our eggs at the start. Here, I'll see if I can find the page. So we have all our eggs from the start. And then all the animals that hatch out of them. So we have insects, we have lobsters, we have some, we have a reptile, all sorts of animals hatching out of these eggs. So that is An Egg is Quiet. That was by Diana Aston and Sylvia Long. So, in the background, I was wondering if our Kestrel would um, take a bath or eat some of that mouse. We'll see if she still does. But I saw a couple people maybe had questions while we were reading. Otherwise, I have a lot of cool eggs to hopefully show you here. But I did see, do turtle eggs have yolk was a good question. Um, yes, they do. So reptile eggs tend to have kind of softer, kind of squishier eggshells, kind of um, it's like leathery feeling. Um, but on the inside, they still have yolk, and that's what's going to feed those embryos or those tiny baby turtles. That's what's going to feed them as they grow up. Growing up inside of an egg is a lot of work, and you need a lot of energy and nutrients, all that good food. You're going to need all of that to grow up. So yes, they have yolk inside of them. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. Oops, there we go. Looks like the connection got low for a second there. So one thing I wanted to show you was since the book mentioned an ostrich egg, we actually have a hollowed out ostrich egg. So look how big this is. I have to hold it in two hands. It's a pretty big egg. And if you look at it up close, you can see those big pores on the outside of the eggshell. That's how air can get in and out. You can even see this one's hollowed out on the inside. So this really big egg. You can almost see how thick that eggshell needs to be for such a large egg. So normally this isn't the only egg that's laid. Normally an ostrich will, egg a lot, will lay a lot of these eggs all at once. So there'll be lots of these sitting around. It's a pretty big egg. It's very thick, very strong too. You can imagine that ostriches are laying these out in big open grasslands. You need really big eggs. Yeah, very big eggs. On the other hand, I should probably show you what a small egg looks like. This is 
a model of an egg, since we have an American kestrel here, this is what the egg of an American kestrel looks like. This is how little it is. So a bird that size, she weighs about the same as one stick of butter. If you go into your fridge and you take out one stick of butter, that's about how much she weighs. She would hatch out of an egg about this big. It has all these really nice brown speckles on it. American kestrels are usually laying their eggs inside of holes in dead trees, or sometimes people will build nest boxes for them um, that they can lay their eggs inside of. They like to lay their eggs inside of nice enclosed spaces where they can feel really nice and safe and protected. So it's an American kestrel egg. What other really good eggs do we have? I should, so you have a good sense of scale. I should show you our chicken eggs. We have some chicken eggs. A lot of us are probably pretty familiar with chicken eggs. We have a white chicken egg and a brown kind of speckly chicken egg. So even eggs from the same kind of bird might look different. That is, as the egg shell is being formed, there are different kind of uh, compounds or different kind of proteins that go into the egg shell that give them their different colors and patterns. So the colors and patterns might help the eggs camouflage or stay hidden. For some birds that have a lot of eggs or nests in the same area, they might have special colors and patterns that help tell them which egg is theirs so they go to the right nest. It also helps keep the eggs really strong. So sometimes the colors and patterns on them are made out of chemicals that help make the eggshell stronger. How many, ooh, how many days do kestrels incubate their eggs? Um, for an American kestrel, I want to say around 20 to 30 days. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I'll have to look that one up afterwards to make sure I say the right number. But for a lot of our raptors here in Minnesota, they're usually sitting on their eggs for around a month or so. But I'll have to double check on exactly how long American kestrels are sitting on their eggs for um, or incubating them. That's a really good question. We'll double check that one and make sure that we answer that one in the comments. I don't want to tell you the wrong number, but usually for a lot of raptors around here, it's about a month, between like 20 to 30 days. <laughs> Some kestrel appreciation. I was kind of bummed. I brought her in here to kind of get used to the, the camera setup, and she was drinking some water, so hopefully she'll come over and drink some more water. I also have a um, spray bottle, because oftentimes, even though she was sitting out in the rain earlier, um, this particular American kestrel is usually, seems to be a pretty big fan of taking a shower, so we'll see. How do they lay eggs? That is a very interesting question. So, this answer might be, I don't want to say gross, this must be, might be an exciting answer for some of us. So, what happens with an egg? is the eggs that come from an organ kind of up inside of their body called an ovary and it's, it contains all the little egg cells. And so when they're gonna produce an egg, that egg will kind of leave the ovary and start traveling down this really long tube called an oviduct. The word ova means the little egg and duct is kind of just like a tube. So it's the egg tube. So it's called an oviduct. And as this little egg cell travels down the oviduct, it gets all the nice layers around it. And so it gets to have all of the um, yolk and proteins develop. And then the egg shell is laid down in layers around the egg. So it's nice and protected. And then here's where it gets kind of fun is that birds, they only have one exit from their body. So when they go to the bathroom, all of their waste all of their waste comes out of the same place at the same time and their eggs come out of the same place too. So they have uh, the kind of exit point on their body is called a cloaca and that's where all of that just came from just now. It's the same spot that an egg would come out too. So very efficient, very uh, multi-use for them. So that is how they lay an egg, is it passes through their body, getting all the nice layers of eggshell on it, and then they lay it, and then that way they can then be ready to go to incubate it and uh, keep it nice and toasty warm. Yes, that was some very good timing from our American kestrel. <laughs> yeah, and how, eggs do their, how big do the eggs get really depends on um, the kind of birds. Like I said, the American kestrel egg, but we also have those ostrich eggs, the smallest egg that is laid by a bird is from a bird called a bee hummingbird. 
Now, a bee hummingbird is the smallest bird in the entire world. It weighs a little bit over two, two grams. So that's the same as, I brought visual aids. If you are unfamiliar with grams, a gram is about how much a single paper clip weighs. So a bee hummingbird weighs about two to three paper clips in weight, and their eggs weigh about half of a gram. So that's like one of these really, really tiny paper clips. So you have a bird that weighs about two or three of these paper clips weighing an egg, laying an egg that only weighs about one of these little paper clips. It's a pretty big egg for such a tiny bird, but that is the the tiniest bird in the world laying the tiniest bird egg in the world. There are some even tinier eggs laid by fish or coral or things like that. There are lots of very, very tiny eggs, but for birds, the tiniest they get is about half a gram versus our up to eight pound ostrich egg. This one probably weighed more like three or four pounds. There used to be a bird called an elephant bird that lived in Madagascar. Their eggs could get over um, about a foot long. So the ostrich egg wasn't quite a foot long, so the elephant bird's eggs weighed, were about a foot long, very round. So there are some, there's a big variety of bird egg sizes. <laughs> the kestrel is very good at breeding, yes. She is, um, this particular American kestrel, we call her Darner. Um, she is a bird who is uh, 10 years old this year. So she has been teaching people for a, quite a long time for an American kestrel. Typically American kestrels live about eight to 10 years out in the wild, um, even though they are excellent predators of things like mice and dragonflies and grasshoppers and small birds, a lot of those other small animals, excellent predators, but they are pretty tiny. So there are lots of other animals out there that might eat them. They also go on quite a long migration to the Southern US and Central America every year. So our Minnesota American kestrels need to make quite a journey um, every year. So they're just coming back around now. I think we're starting to get our American kestrels back, which is excellent. Um, so yeah, typically out in the wild, they're living about eight to 10 years. Again, usually here at places or at places like the Raptor Center where they have lots of food and a good place to live and don't have to worry about predators, they can usually live about twice as long. So this particular American kestrel, um, she's about 10 years old this year and has been teaching people for most of that time. She came in as a first year bird. Some of you might have noticed as she's been looking around, she actually does not have an eye on one side. Um, so when she was brought into the Raptor Center, um, she had been injured. We don't know exactly how. She either ran into something or something ran into her, but she had injured her eye and couldn't see out of it anymore. Uh, so that's why she lives here at the Raptor Center. So some of you might notice um, as she's looking around, you might know she only has one eye. That would make it really hard for her to find her food out in the wild. So that's why she lives with us, not being able to see as well as she needs to. Are all eggs the same size from the same bird? And is it bad if one is much smaller? That is a really good question. Kind of depends on the bird. So usually the eggs can be pretty consistent in size, um, or um, pretty, pretty even in size, it's probably a better way to say it. Um, if they're smaller, they might be smaller because maybe the bird isn't getting um, enough of the nutrients that it needs to make as big of an egg. So maybe it's a bird that lays four or five eggs in one nest at once um, every kind of day in a row. Maybe by the fifth day when they're laying that egg, their body didn't have all of the food that it needed to help them lay the egg uh, as big as everything else. Um, so it might kind of depend on um, kind of what's going on with that individual bird. Usually they're about the same size. Um, every once in a while, just it doesn't go quite right. So sometimes we'll end up with little teeny tiny eggs or eggs where maybe the shell didn't form the right way. Um, it might not necessarily mean anything is wrong with the bird. Um, sometimes it might just be eh, maybe they didn't get the right nutrients that they needed or the right kind of food energy that they really needed. So it can kind of depend on the bird or kind of the, the situation that's going on. Oh, in the wild, what do American kestrels like to eat the most? It's a very good question. Um, it can kind of depend on the individual, right? If you have parents that taught you how to catch mice really, really well, maybe mice are your favorite. 
but one of the most important foods for American kestrels is the darner dragonfly. That's actually what we named this American kestrel after because it's so important to them. During that long migration, the American kestrel actually follows the migration of the darner dragonfly. Now, I'm not talking about those tiny little uh, mayflies or things like that that people might see, or the damselflies. I'm talking about the big, gr bright green, big, crunchy dragonflies. They migrate to Central and South America every year. And so it's kind of like if you go on a road trip, sometimes you need to stop somewhere to get some fast food. And so American kestrels, while they're migrating, they can just grab a dragonfly out of the air, eat it, and keep on flying. It's kind of like having fast food on a road trip. They're able to snag those dragonflies, eat, and keep on having energy to fly. So darner dragonflies can be kind of a, a top choice for favorite food, I think. How many eggs does an American kestrel lay in a clutch? I know I've seen nest boxes with uh, American kestrel chicks in it. Um, anywhere from usually about four to six is a pretty, pretty typical number. Um, there are probably some that have gotten up to eight or so, but usually about four to six is a pretty good number. Um, with most raptors, um, especially the larger raptors, you might see numbers closer to maybe two or three, maybe four. Very good stretch behind me. Um, but for your smaller raptors, like your American kestrels, who might need to have some extra young there just in case some predators um, catch a couple of them, you want to make sure you have a couple of extras. So usually about four to six eggs is pretty typical for our American kestrels. How often does darner preen? Darner, along with other birds, they need to preen a lot. Um, they're uh, feathers are what are going to keep them warm and dry. They're what's going to let them fly and hunt. So they need to keep those feathers in peak condition. So she needs to be able to kind of zip all of her feathers together if they get kind of ruffled. She needs to rearrange them. She needs to take off any dirt or dust or any bits of food that might have gotten on them. And she also needs to get some special oils on her feathers. So she actually has a very special little gland or little spot on the top of her tail um, called her preen gland. If you want the very scientific term, it's called the uropigial gland, but we call it the preen gland because it's a little, little spot that makes the special oil. She's going to rouse, rearrange all of her feathers there. So she has a preen gland that has some special oils that she needs to get on the sides of her beak and then wipe all over her feathers. And that's what keeps her feathers nice and a little bit waterproofed. Um, so that will help keep her dry. It'll help keep them all nice and together. So birds need to preen a lot. Preening is very important. Let's see some other eggs. I have some very cool eggs here. Um, one of my favorite eggs to look at this is actually from a bird called a rough, uh, excuse me, this is from a broadwing hawked. Broad, right? Yes, a broadwing hawked. Broad winged hawk. I can say the words, it's great. Broad winged hawks. I think it looks like a beautiful watercolor painting. I'm gonna try to like get it to focus better. But it has these brown and gray colors and there's almost this purplish color to it. So this would be laid in a nice kind of round stick nest that the broad-winged hawks would have built. You'll usually see them kind of on the edges of forests, um, especially if there's any um, kind of water inside of the forest, which is a lot of areas here in Minnesota, especially in our suburbs. We get a lot of calls from people who have broad-winged hawks nesting in their yards. And these are the kind of eggs that they are protecting in those nests. I think they're gorgeous. How many inches typically are they tall? Are we, um, for the American kestrel, I would call her, so her actual body is pretty tiny. If you include that long, long falcon tail, what are you, probably about eight inches or so long from the top of her head to her tail? Something around there. Less than a foot, less than a foot long, kind of fully stretched out. Uh, her wingspan is closer to about two feet across when she actually has her wings fully out. As a tiny species of falcon, actually the smallest species of falcon here in North America, um, she has those very long pointy falcon wings, very long narrow tail, perfect for really building up speed. Um, they're not quite as fast as your larger falcons, like the famous peregrine falcon, um, but they can get pretty fast, up to maybe 60 miles an hour or so when they're diving down. 
You see she just tucked one of her feet up under her fluffy feathers. Um, but they'll use those very long pointy wings and that long narrow tail to really build up speed and kind of maneuver really quickly. So what does Darner eat? Um, mainly here she gets uh, a combination of chicken and quail and mouse. So today she's getting all mice. The last couple days she said quail um, or chicken. She'll get chicken, I think, tomorrow. So she gets a nice variety of foods to try to kind of mix it up, mimic a lot of the animals that they'd be eating out in the wild. And how big do they get? Believe it or not, this is a pretty big American kestrel. So she weighs, today, she weighed about 110 grams. Uh, the largest kestrel that we have living with us um, is about 120. For those of us who don't speak grams, we like to speak pounds, um, that's about a quarter of a pound. So a little bit less than a quarter of a pound. So that's the same um, I was saying earlier. If you go into your fridge and you take out one stick of butter, that's about how much she weighs. And that is full grown for an American kestrel. So they're hatching from an egg about this big, about this big, and getting to their full grown size in about a month or two. So they grow up pretty quickly after hatching out of these eggs. Let's see a couple more eggs, some very cool eggs here. I do have, um, so owl eggs tend to be very round, especially because owls are usually laying their eggs inside of holes in dead trees um, or some other places like that. And so I actually have an egg laid by an eastern screech owl. I wanted to show you how almost perfectly round this is compared to our kind of oblong or kind of what we think of as egg shaped. This is a super round, tiny little egg. So I think it looks like a ping pong ball. It's about the, <laughs> about the shape and size of a ping pong ball. This is weighed by a bird, or this is laid by a bird that weighs just a little bit more than our American kestrel here. And they lay this really big round egg. So owls tend to have these very round eggs or other birds who lay their eggs in places where the eggs can't roll away tend to lay nice round eggs. What does her call sound like? I love all the comments everyone's making because someone actually wrote out what her call sounds like. Um, there are a couple different noises that they make, but uh, writing it out as killy, killy, killy is kind of what it sounds like. I'm very bad at imitating bird sounds. Um, so maybe I'll try to get a video later and post it of um, what these birds sound like. Um, but yeah, it's usually written out as the killy, killy, killy kind of noise. So it's um, oh, really good stretches, excellent. Um, so that's usually what they sound like as we write it out as killy, killy, killy. I have one more. This isn't from a raptor, but it's still a very cool nest that I found where you can see how the birds kind of put all this very soft material on the inside. It looks like kind of dandelion fluff and then wove all of these kind of sticks together. This is probably from some sort of sparrow or songbird, some kind of small non-raptor bird, but we have an example of one here. There's a, a piece of toilet paper that was included on it. Lots of, um, lots of really good soft materials. I found one um, near me recently that had um, like fast food dining straw wrappers woven into it. So birds can be very resourceful when they're building these nests, finding soft materials from around them. So really quality engineering, very admirable. It has that really soft material on the inside. How do you clean out the shell? There are a lot of cool ways to clean out the shells. The ones that I've done here, I usually use a syringe for, but if you poke two little holes on each end of it, you can actually take a straw and blow through it and it's called blowing out the egg. So if you find a cool chicken egg that you wanna preserve, just poke two little holes in the bottom. I used, I think a paper clip to just like bore a little hole in the bottom and on the top. And you take a straw and you blow into it and it blows everything out. Um, I used a syringe, so I only had to poke one hole so I could kind of suck all of the material out um, and then clean it out with some water. Yes, I know, birds are, they make incredible nests. Um, this is a very impressive example, but there are some very interesting nest types out there in the world um, that different birds make. So a couple more questions here. Where do they usually make their nests and migrate? So for American kestrels, they usually are looking for holes in dead trees or nest boxes or some other kind of nice, safe, enclosed space, um, usually on the edge of like an open field area. So near parklands, um, open, open meadowlands, 
um, farmers fields, places like that um, where there are lots of those insects flying around, lots of mice and small animals running around on the ground, um, those kinds of things. So big open spaces are generally what American kestrels are looking for. Um, I know I've seen them living over, um, especially in our more kind of urban developments. I also will see them um, kind of in the kind of water runoff areas where it's a little bit marshy almost, or there's kind of a, it turns into a little bit of a prairie, but also kind of marshy if there's been a lot of rain. I'll see them hovering over there. They're one of the few raptors that can hover. Um, and so you'll actually see them kind of rowing their wings and you'll see them hovering. They'll keep their heads perfectly still even while their body is moving. So they're able to kind of keep an eye on a delicious mouse on the ground um, while kind of staying up in the air flying and then can swoop down and grab it that way. Can I do a close up? Yeah, I'll see if I can move this. I don't want to move the whole tripod. I don't want to concern her. Can I zoom in on this? I don't know if it'll let me. Oh, whoa, too far. Sorry about that. A little bit of a close up. I don't want to move the whole tripod um, thing. I think that might be a little bit scary. Um, I have it precariously perched on some water pans right now anyway. <laughs> Any last questions about our American kestrel? I don't know if you can hear, I'm probably talking too loud, but I can actually hear one of our American kestrels making noises out in the courtyard right now. Um, so I'll see if I can get a video and post it in the comments of a good American kestrel kind of set of vocalizations or those noises. Otherwise, thank you all again for joining us for An Egg is Quiet. Uh, and then this is our one of our American kestrels, Darner. Um, we'll see if she takes a bath or something here. I'll, I'll leave a video on for a little bit um, and see if we see any exciting behaviors to post in the comments. But thank you all again for joining us for another Tuesday uh, reading with raptors. Oh, what is Kestrel status? That is a very good note to end on. Thank you for asking that. Um, kestrels and American kestrels, um, they're only found here kind of in North America, so kind of southern um, Canada and kind of on down. You can find some subspecies living down in the Caribbean islands. Um, so really kind of here on this, this half of the globe. Um, and they're not considered to be an endangered species, um, though there are a couple of locations where they started to listing They've started to list them as species of concern. We have been seeing um, their numbers declining over the years, especially over the last maybe 10 or 20 years. Um, we've started to see fewer of them at our kind of annual migration counting points, like for example, Hawk Ridge up in Duluth where they count migrants coming through. Um, we've been seeing fewer of them. We've also been seeing fewer of them at places like the Raptor Center as well. Um, so we're just starting to do some uh, more intentional study of their numbers and figuring out um, if they should be um, you know, considered of a little bit higher concern. Um, but right now, not officially listed as endangered species or anything like that. Um, but we are monitoring the situation. Um, the um, American Kestrel Partnership is a subset of um, of the Peregrine Foundation. So if you're interested in learning more about American kestrel conservation, they're a fantastic resource. They're really focused on um, preserving falcons um, and other raptors worldwide. Um, and then they specifically have the American Kestrel Partnership focusing on American kestrels and conservation. So definitely check them out. Um, we can put a link down in the comments as well. Do we have a rough egg? I do here, I'll zoom out really quick. See a couple, a couple last few eggs. I will say a lot of times our video has been kicking us off after about 40 minutes. So we'll do one or two more here. So for those of you who missed it earlier, this really rough egg has the, all these like really big pores in it. This is an egg from an ostrich. So that really, really rough egg that kind of, it's still smooth, but it has these really big air holes or kind of the pores in it to let the air come through. One or two more eggs. Um, for an idea, since some of you may be fans of uh, the bald eagle webcams, this is about the size of a bald eagle egg kind of compared to my hand. So it's about the same size actually as, as a Canada goose egg, just a little bit more round. So if you've been watching all of the Canada geese near you, as you've been hopefully outside walking around enjoying the great weather we've been, have, we've been having prior to today, this is this, about the size of an egg of a Canada goose. So they've probably got these eggs near the, near the water's edge there. So compared to, we've got a bald eagle model egg. So a bit bigger than a chicken egg, about the size of a goose egg. Um, do one or two more, two. I like these because these are actually, uh, 
these are actually the ostrich egg is real yes it was hollowed out um, it feels like a really thick porcelain is what it feels like um, I really enjoy these eggs because these are actually eggs laid by um, one of our birds that lives here so these are actually eggs oh thank you Steve um, <laughs> these are eggs from a great horned owl that actually lives here on site um, kind of egged uh, or kind of lit uh, laid similar to most chicken eggs there wasn't actually a, a baby owl inside of them or anything like that but it was kind of springtime it was the normal time for a great horned owl to lay eggs so these are eggs actually laid here on site so they were sat on for a few weeks and then um, after that just kind of started to ignore them so we removed them so that they would not um, get broken because at that point they probably would have been a little bit gross so these are eggs laid uh, these ones are from two years ago they've been sitting in the fridge so these are eggs from a great horned owl named Samantha that lives here on site. So I think that they're um, just wonderful and round. I just owl eggs I find so fascinating. All right. Well, I'll um, I'll see if I can get some more pictures and I'll see if I can get that video of an American kestrel vocalizing here. Get one more wonderful view of that of that really excellent stripy tail. American kestrels are one of the it won't let me zoom in. <laughs> um, so American kestrels are one of the more colorful raptor species that we have here. Um, the males pretty famously have the nice kind of bright blue wings. The females tend to have these nice brown and uh, black stripes. So some excellent kind of tail stretching and wing stretching and some good preening to finish us off. Um, so thank you again for joining us here with Reading with Raptors. We will see you all next Tuesday. Until then, everyone take care, stay safe and healthy out there, and keep on getting out and enjoying, watching all of our birds returning. We have lots of species coming back over the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye out, get some birding in, and we will see you all next week for more Reading with Raptors. Have a, good, a great week. <laughs>